What's up guys? It's Matt here. Hope you're all doing well. I'm going to teach you a fun song I've been hearing on the radio a lot called Wagon Wheel. It's an older song. A lot of different artists sing it. Um, but it's a very easy song to play. It uses my same four chords that I use on so many of my videos. The G, the D, E minor, C, then G, D, C. The entire song is going to go Rock me mama like a wagon wheel Hug me, mama, any way you feel. Hey, mama, rock me. Oh, rock me, mama, like a wind and rain. Rock me, mama, like a southbound train. Hey, mama, rock me. So, what I want to do with this song is teach you multiple ways, uh, different strumming patterns. Again, you're always going to use a G, D minor and C and notice how I play those I'll put a link um, entitled your first four chords because rather than teach the chords like this G D E minor C see how much movement there what I do is teach them like this you see a very similar sound but gets a lot less movement um, so there's different strumming patterns you can do One's the bass drum where you do a bass note and then down. like a bass drum. Um, again, the verse is going to be the same way. G, D, E minor, C, G, D, C. So, um, what you also can do is just a regular strumming, but you got to focus on the timing to emphasize certain strums. It's kind of boom, boom, da, boom, da, da. What I'm doing is I'm emphasizing each chord change. G. So again, this song is great to work on different strumming patterns. Um, if you're first starting out, what I recommend, I've taught people in a lot of in-person lessons, is make sure your, your chords are sounding very clear. You want to pick down each string. So go. Rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, mama, in a way you feel. Hey. So 
so uh, let me run and grab this capo real fast. Another thing you want to do is to work on your singing, um, use the capo to switch it in different keys. So right there I was playing at the key of G, but you might um, want to raise it up a key or something and just try the capo different places and play the same four chords relative to the capo. Practice putting that capo in different places. That'll work on expanding your voice and stretching your voice different keys. Um, and even working on starting out from the right key. And I still struggle with this all the time. Um, I'll jump off in, into singing and I'll be in the wrong key and it'll sound all weird. But uh, work on using that capo. Again, the same four chords relative to the capo. Um, This helps you guys. Let's jump into the devotion here. So for the devotional for this video, I want to talk to believers. By that I mean someone who has put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what he's done for us on the cross. I've, I've, I've observed this a lot in others lately, even myself, and it's made me think a lot, so I thought I'd pitch it out to you guys to put on your hearts as well. In Matthew 5 and what's known as the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus went up on the mountain to teach uh, teach the multitude of people. He says, uh, verse 13, 14, uh, and 16, says, you're the salt of the earth, says you're the light of the world, a city that's set high up on a hill that cannot be hidden. Basically saying, as a Christian, as a Christ follower, if you're going to follow me, you got to be different. People have to see your life as different. And it, it made me kind of start thinking about that. Are we really different in our lives? And I want, I want to ask you these six questions with no answer just for you to ponder on, to see as a Christian, a believer in Christ, and the hope you have, are you different than the people around you that aren't believers? Um, one question, how do you respond to crisis? Another question, how do you respond to blessings when things are good? How do you view money? What is your overall purpose? By that, I don't mean to make 15 cold calls a day or to work your job or do this. Just over the big picture of life, what is your purpose? Are others blessed by your presence? When you're in the room, when you're in a different environment, um, whether it's around believers or non-believers, are others blessed based on you being there? And the last question, what do you worry about? What is it that you refuse to place in God's hands? and a turnover to him. What is it that you worry about? Before I end, just to, to, with all these kind of questions, they can, our answers, I think, can, can be kind of troubling because we realize our failures and our sin nature and, and the fact that we can't do it. But I challenge you today, I want you to read John chapter 15 because it's in our weakness that God is strong. And in John 15, he talks about like the vine and the branch. If we will abide in Christ... And that's where this posture and this position comes into play, that you say, God, I know I can't do it. I can't be who you want me to be. So I'm going to abide in Christ and just stay as close to you as I can, Jesus, and allow you to work in my life because that's where the true blessings come from. Because in my own sinful nature, I'm a sinful man that's as filthy rags. My best is as filthy rags, the Bible says. But when I abide in Christ and allow him to work through me, then the blood covers me and my sin is cleansed white as snow. So go over those questions in your own mind. Think about those throughout this week and ask God to help you to learn to take a posture that leans into him, that you trust in him, that you abide in him so others can be blessed and we can be that salt of the earth, light of the world, and a city on a hill that Christ calls us to be. Hope you guys have a great day and God bless you.